I have done leg extensions every single day for the past six days. Six days I've done leg extensions. Um, initially, I was going kind of heavy, then light, then heavy, then light. So kind of like, you know, volume one day and then I would push a heavier set of weights the next day. Pretty much the last three days, I've just done heavy. You know, I look back at the, at the training log, what I've been writing down, all of them have been heavy. And every single time I've been able to recover, like, like I didn't do anything. So yesterday, like, you know, I pushed really hard and I was expecting, oh my God, here we go. I'm going to be sore today. Nothing. As you can see here, today I decided to do single leg uh, extensions. Um, I swear to you, tomorrow I'm going to be, you know, perfectly fine as well. I'm, I'm not going to be sore. This is like literally the, the, the cheapest freaking exercise I've come across. I've never done an exercise every single day to this many reps, this much volume and not feel anything, you know. I don't know what it is. I know some of you guys are thinking, but you've been squatting every single day for the last 50 million years. I have, man, but I've like, I've auto regulated. I've never done like pig squats back to back to back, you know, I'm doing like hundreds of reps with this man. Like I'm doing sets of 30 sets of 20 for like 10 sets, man. Um, and you know, I'd get pumped, pump, pump quads, you know, I'd feel them that afternoon, that night or whatever. And then I'd wake up the following morning, like nothing. Maybe the first or second day, I felt something like the mildest of mildest uh, doms, but nothing. So, you know, on one end, I've got the, the, the you know, deadlifts. Uh, it's, it's now today, this day five, I think, since the last time I did them. Um, and I feel pretty good today, but, you know, it's taken me five days to wash away that fatigue from a single damn rep of deadlifts. Yeah, okay, it was a one rep max. Yeah, okay, it was a, it was a you know, very kind of slow lift, you know, meaning heaps of time under tension. Um, five days to recover from that. And this thing is literally, I feel like 12 hours, 12 hours and I'm good to go again. It's phenomenal. And it's really good in, in my case, because that's exactly what I need to do to bring up this weakness that I have. Um, and you know, I've been actually thinking last few days that this is actually the source of my, uh, hip pain. I know I've kind of been beating around the bush, like anybody's business. Um, you know, hamstring, quad, whatever. I don't even know what it is, but uh, my hips have been feeling really good since I've done this amount of uh, leg extensions, like heaps and heaps and heaps of volume. Um, I dare say I've got some more internal rotation in the hip because of this as well. Um, you'll see when I get to the squats. Um, for some reason, today, as I was squatting, I just wanted to bring my feet in even more. And I wanted to point my, my, toes, my toes forward ever since I've started doing these leg extensions. So today I decided, let, let them. Let the toes go wherever they want. Let the hips go wherever they want. And now I, I'm, I'm like squatting super narrow, you know, super into my quads. Um, I feel comfortable. There's no hip pain. Um, I feel really stacked at the bottom position, man. Like this is the thing. Like a lot of you guys have said, you know, you know, space out your, your stance. You'll be able to sit further down in, in between your legs. Um, I feel like when I do that, I'm kind of collapsing in. There's nothing to support me underneath. You know what I mean? Like you're sitting in between your legs and then you have to kind of like save yourself from that well you know you're kind of dumping into the well but when i have my feet really close together like you'll see in this video super freaking narrow stands i feel like i'm sitting on top of my ankles i'm sitting on my calves i'm, I'm sitting on something that's going to push me back up it's like a more stacked position um, i can't really explain to you guys this is kind of the best i uh, uh, i can do i feel like i'm sitting on top of myself like a coil right like a you know car car um, spring you know everything like stacked on top of each other whereas if that spring if you had it kind of sideways, if you can even imagine that, um, it would have less rebound, right? Because it's kind of falling away from itself. Um, I'm falling on top of myself, and I just feel like it's just so, so much easier to get out of the bottom position that way. Um, in fact, when I see my kids squat, you know, natural squatters, like every kid, you know, gets born into this world. You know, my kids squat really narrow as well. They're basically sitting on their ankles. Um, sometimes through our life, adult life, we just lose all our freaking hip internal rotation, and we just lose everything and we have to kind of, you know, do the Louis Simmons West Side Barbell Boys squat. Um, but what you need to understand with a squat like that is that those boys usually have gear, right? They have those, um, whatever you call them, briefs or suits or whatever the hell it is. So, you know, those suits and briefs rebound out of that bottom position. But if you're squatting sumo and you're raw, I don't know what's getting you out of that position, man. You know, automatically you have to cut depth, right? You have to kind of cheat your way through depth. Um, somehow get your femurs paralleled with the floor and then up you go. But there's no way you could squat ATG that way, right? 
You would just freaking sit on your ass and you wouldn't be able to get up. Um, so anyway, really, really interesting. Uh, the fact that I'm doing an exercise to volume and it's so cheap. I, I love cheap things, man. I love cheap food. I love <laughs> going to my local Vietnamese joints and eating pho and all that stuff. You pay like $9 and you're laughing. Nine Australian dollars, by the way. I don't know what that is in America. It's even cheaper, probably like six bucks or whatever. Um, for some reason, like I've always loved that stuff, like peasant food, you know. I, anyway, whatever, I'm getting off topic. What I want to say is I love the fact that leg extensions are cheap. And what I even love more, more than that is the fact that I need leg extensions for my weakness. So it's like super quick way I can kind of get, get this weakness up to scratch. Um, I guess this is the benefit of our selection exercises, right? Um, yeah, I can do you know, front squats, I can do uh, kettlebell, um, what do you call them, uh, 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 not pistol squats, I, can't, I forget the word now, where you, when you, where you mount it right in front, under your chin, um, can't think of it, uh, anyway, there's so many different other exercises you, you can do, I mean, and a lot of those exercises call so many more muscles in, you know, uh, you know, the front squat, like I've said to you guys, you know, some of you guys have said, why don't you do front squats, I love front squats, man, uh, but for me, to be honest with you, I do front squats if I want to bring up my upper back. Because <laughs> that's, what, that's, that's what gets sore on me, man. Like if I do a set of 20 with, with front squats, man, the following morning, my, my, my whole neck traps area is jacked. Um, and oftentimes, I start failing a lift, I start falling forward, and I start losing my rack, front rack position if I, do, if I do front squats. This thing, I can freaking have a sandwich while I'm doing leg extensions, man. I can eat an ice cream, I can talk to you while I'm doing this thing. It's just... One joint, like, you know, isolation exercises have their place as much as I don't like to do them and don't like to think about them. I wish squats addressed every little freaking problem I had in the gym. Um, but in this case, if you have a lagging muscle, uh, you have to attack it. Uh, and, and in this case, I'm attacking it with the cheapest thing possible, man. I'm doing this thing every single day. I still can't get over it, man. Uh, you know, you, you, could, you could say that this exercise is ineffective, right? Because it's not disturbing you enough. It's not inducing enough damage for you to recover for a week um i don't know you know when, when i do the exercise when i'm in the workout i'm feeling you know like i'm working really hard quads are pumped i'm walking around like a freaking baboon you know like a whole gorilla posturing around the place because i've got these big ass squads um you can see me here I, I don't know what's happening here but i'm pulling my pants up um i don't know like uh, maybe my quads have grown i don't know maybe the pants have shrunk i don't know what's going on but i'm, I'm i don't have enough um you know, giving the pants to squat, uh, uh, these pants anyway, uh, to squat into the hole anymore. So I need to pull them up, whatever. Maybe maybe the same thing has shrunk or maybe I've grown a little bit, whatever. Um, <clears throat> so I feel like the leg extensions are doing something. Um, it's definitely, if, if, if anything, it's telling my brain where my quads are at. It's telling my quads, all right, you got some tissue here, man, you might want to use it. And this is why I'm doing it before the squats. I, some of you guys are saying, why don't you do it after the squats? I'm doing it for the squats so, so I can tell my brain, all right, this is what's happening today. There's muscle here. You better use it, man. We're using this muscle here. But if I don't do any kind of activation exercise and just go into the strength of the squat, my big old glutes, you know, steal the party. My doctors steal the party. My quads are there like frozen, freaking. My, my, my quads are frozen. Everything else is burning up. So if you have a laggy muscle, say it's a hamstring, say it's a freaking tricep, whatever, smash out a couple of tricep, the tricep extensions, smash some uh, hamstring curls, or you guys love naughty curls. So many of you guys are saying naughty curls. Do whatever you want, man, before whatever exercise you want to do, bench press or deadlift or whatever, and you will feel that muscle working and you will have kind of a connection with your brain and you'll be like, oh, what's up? This is, this is what we're using. Um, so I think a lot of us, you know, me included, man, I, uh, yeah, I've spoken about this quite a lot. Um, I always thought that the squat is going to take, every, take care of everything. I always thought the bench press is going to take care of everything. It's not like that, man. Our bodies are strange freaking creatures. Our bodies are always looking for the path of least resistance. And obviously, every single human being on this planet has a strength and therefore has a weakness. And our bodies keep jumping on the bandwagon, right? I'm always, always chasing a, a bandwagon and, and jumping on the strengths. So when I'm squatting, my ductus get hurt, my glutes get hurt, everything's hurting there, nothing else, right? It's just, it's really interesting. So if you're somebody that's squatting, right? And a few guys have, uh, have said this to me. You're squatting and then you get this mighty old pump in your lower back and you have to stop. Yes, there could be some technical things going on there. Some mobility, maybe you lack internal or external rotation. Um, and that's kind of making your butt wink happen. And that's why your, your erectors are getting pumped, trying to reverse that. But 
Try this, man. If you can't feel anything else working other than your lower back, try and activating whatever muscle you want. Say the quad, right, with these leg extensions. Or, I don't know, go do the good girl, bad girl thing, you know, get your adductors, you know, kind of warmed up. You know, don't smash yourself, but just kind of get them warmed up. Um, by the way, check this out, man. I, I'm going to play this uh, uh, video. Actually, yeah, I'll play this video again. And you'll see um, that I did uh, 180 times one really narrow. Um, but yeah, so, so if you've never experienced activation exercises, um, try it. Uh, you can do anything, man. Um, the, the moral of the story here is that you're not going for like a full-on balls-to-the-wall thing before your whatever movement is. Um, just do it enough to pump some blood in there and to turn on the, you know, the, the, I guess the anagram, the neurological anagram to that particular part of the body. It's kind of like a map for the brain, right? You know, you want to go from A to B, there's 50 different routes you can take, but you want to take a specific route. Well, if you don't show, if you don't have a map to go through that particular route, you're not going to be able to drive through that, right? So look at the map. This, this is, this is what activation exercises do. It's like a map to a different path to get the job done, A to B. That's how I think about it, man. So you can do this for anything. Uh, a lot of guys are, you know, reading through forums and, you know, listening to videos all the time. A lot of, guys, a lot of bodybuilders say that they like to do leg, uh, leg curls before squats because it can, they kind of feel like it gets blood in there um, and it makes it easier for the, for the squat and makes kind of the knees health, healthier and happier and whatnot. Um, you know, you could do that. If your hamstrings are lagging, do that. Uh, you can do anything you want, right? Everyone's individual. There's no, you know, cookie cutter stuff here. You need to assess yourself, see what's up, see what you need, and then go from there. Uh, in my case, as I've said, my quads seem to be the problem. Uh, in fact, uh, I just watched a, today I watched a video from Dave Tate, um, Elite FTS. They had Juji Mufu on there. Um, and it was like a 45 minute video of, of Dave basically telling John, you know, how to go about increasing his deadlift to 700 pounds. And apparently John has problems with, uh, you know, breaking the weight off the ground, off the ground strength, um, which is funny because that's exactly what I'm going through right now. Um, anyway, in this video, I, I kind of kept looking at his quads and yeah, they're very, very uh, weak looking. I mean, it's strong, everything's strong looking, but he's got, uh, his VMO look very um, small compared to the rest of his physique. I mean, his upper body is incredible. Like he looks like a, like an animal on top. Um, his legs are kind of lagging and especially the quads. So, you know, you can teach, you can, you can talk about technique all you want. Um, you know, if your muscles are lagging there, they're going to be weak, man, right? So if I was him, man, I, you know, you can shift your weight onto your heels and you can do deficits, deadlifts uh, until the cows come home. Until you get some mass onto those squads, until you get some proper hypertrophy, proper connection with your mind to that muscle, you're going to struggle. Um, anyway, uh, in this video as well, you can see it now, uh, I did a <laughs> bench press, worked up to 110 times one, and then I also did the bar for 90 kilos in one set. Uh, as I said to you guys, I'm influenced by Bilbo Method. Um, I'm going to make one of these videos uh, about the Bilbo Method soon when I kind of feel confident talking about it. But basically, I'm pushing stupid reps with really light weight on the bench press, and it's making me feel all right. Uh, so, so let's see how that kind of goes on. Anyway, guys, uh, until next time, which is tomorrow, uh, have a good one. Uh, peace out. Cheers.